RMVI jeans. Here to take you on another level in new horizons. See clear, no visine. Hey everybody, my name is Reggie Mattis and welcome to my YouTube channel. And if you're new here, Please continue to check out this video and other videos. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button down below. And leave a comment, man. Let me know what you think. How do you feel about the show? Do you like it? Also, don't forget, check out the notifications. And you can also catch some of the Simply Straight Talk episodes on this channel as well. Just look for the little blue picture of me. And then, you know what I'm saying? Check out the show, man. Let me know what you think. But today, I want to talk to you about a couple things number one let's start off with the whole gail king um leslie interview that sort of led to some questions about kobe's past and the girl that was raped back in colorado now this has created a twitter storm and some backlash where gail king feels uns yeah feels unsafe and she feels like snoop dogg put her life in jeopardy which mean in this all when once she did the interview, she was basically poking at Leslie, one of the WNBA stars, about the whole rape thing that took place. That was many years ago. Keep in mind, Kobe Bryant's body wasn't even cold yet, and Gail King was asking these questions. You know, it was just too soon, and Gail King was wrong. It was too soon, and what she really should have did was just just had a normal interview reflecting on his life the memories the good days say that type of thing for something down the line if you're doing a documentary you know it was just too soon and it was disrespectful but we all know that gail king and oprah are not fun not fond of black men they're just not they're not fond of black men and that's just a fact now snoop Dogg chimed in and yes his tweet his met well his his I saw the video. It was a little bit rough. It was rough, but I don't think Snoop Dogg was wrong for calling out Gail King. Could he may have chose some better words? Yes, but I think he was just in the moment. Like I said, Kobe Bryant had just passed away. Snoop Dogg knew Kobe Bryant. If somebody you knew, you know, and you consider them a friend passes away you're gonna have some real emotions if somebody comes on a national platform and they just died they just lost their daughter who died with them but yet you're sitting here talking about something that's irrelevant to the whole situation of them passing something that was many years ago so that's why i say i feel like gail well i know gail king was just wrong snoop dogg could have worded it a little bit better but he was not wrong for calling her out Susan Rice decided that she was going to chime in and talking about all of her, her army was going to come out to get uh, Snoop Dogg and it's going to be worse than what he ever met. You know, here's the thing. This woman, Susan Rice, is supposed to be, you know, she, she's an ambassador of the UN, something like that, whatever. But y'all know how I feel about black politicians already, you know, who, who, who play black when it's time for votes. And then when it's time to speak up for the black community, they don't. Now, Susan Rice has never been an advocate for the black community. She's one of those women, which I'm so tired of seeing, that comes out to attack black men. That's what she does. So... I'm not a fan of Susan Rice. And if you look at Susan Rice's life, you will see that she's not attached to the black community. She's not affiliated with the black community. So you need to recognize that about Susan Rice. So don't think that she's on the black community side. Don't think she wants to see the black community improve, prosper, thrive. No, she don't. Susan Rice does not care about the black community. So y'all need to get that out your head and just let it go. Now that, and for her to be a so-called ambassador and send that tweet out that she sent, that was inappropriate. That was inappropriate. It was totally inappropriate. Now, here's the thing. You got Gail King, black, Snoop Dogg, black, Susan Rice, questionable um because i don't think she claimed black anyway but um i don't know what she is actually but the thing about it is this as black people we gotta learn to stop airing things out publicly like we do 
and really learn how to, especially when you're in their status where you can actually either direct message each other if you're gonna do it on Twitter or you need to just pick up the phone and say, hey, let me holler at Gail, let me holler at Snoop, uh, let me holler at the fake black person, Susan Rice. You know, those kind of conversations should have took place in private. And I don't think sometimes celebrities consider the influence they have on other people and their actions. Now, Snoop Dogg was called a misogynistic because of his tweet, which he called Gail King a bitch and some other stuff. Here's the thing, Snoop Dogg is not misogynistic. And I think Funga Deneva brought up a good point. You know, when does calling somebody out, is as a black man, if I call out a woman, a black woman, for something that she's doing wrong, is it going to be considered misogynistic? But what if black women are not calling out black women? Because that's the state we're in right now. It's like, it's okay to call out black men and label black men, but black women are not being called out. And it's like, you don't hear other black women calling out black women, but they're very quick to call out black men. So that leads us to this whole thing about black women saying that they don't feel that black men are protecting them. My first question is, do you want to be protected? But see, because here's the thing, you, you can't keep sending mixed messages. You can't keep sending mixed messages because you got some women that say, you know, yes, I want a man to be a man. I want a man that's willing to stand up for me and protect me and be there for me if I need help or someone tries to harm me or whatever. But then you have black women that say, well, I don't need a man. I don't need a man to pay my bills. I don't need a man to buy me lunch, take me out to dinner. I can take care of myself. I can defend for myself. I can protect myself. So you see what I'm saying is you're, you're getting, you're sending mixed messages. You're sending mixed messages because you got this whole thing of toxic masculinity where if there's a TV show that shows a black man or a man, you know, basically a man in general these days, but specifically, if a man is going, is like, let's take Rambo, the last Rambo movie. That movie was labeled as misogynistic because the girl got captured, Rambo went to Mexico to get the girl and save her because it was his niece, but everybody's saying that it was, it was misogynistic. It was a helpless, defenseless woman. So when we got movies that come out showing men defending women, it was a misogynistic movie. It's toxic masculinity. So I'm just trying to understand, it's like, do y'all need to wear labels or signs or something or pick out a color and say, listen, if a woman wears blue, that means she, um, she's okay with you helping her. If a woman wears red, that means don't help her. She don't need you. She don't need a man's help. So you stay away from her. You got to be clear in your communication. Because you can't say on one hand, I don't need a man, I can take care of myself. Then on the other hand, say, yes, I think a man should protect a woman and help us if we need help. Then you label that the actions are helping as toxic masculinity. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You see how you're sending a mixed message? So you're gonna have some guy that's like, listen, I'll help if you want me to help. Some guys are like, well, I'll just jump in and take my chances. Other guys are like, fuck it. Because I don't want to be labeled as a toxic masculinity person. I don't want to be labeled as misogynistic. I can't win. If I help you, I'm being toxic. If I do help you, then I'm being weak because you didn't want my help. So what is it? I mean, you need to clarify what it is because you also have black men saying the same thing, that we feel that black women don't support us. 
And I felt like that sometimes. Like I said, y'all know I keep it real with y'all. I don't I don't bullshit you on my YouTube channel. I don't sit here and say what everybody want to hear. I'm not going to sit here and tell you and just say the things I think women want to hear so I can get more women viewers or just say what men want to hear so I can get more men viewers. The truth is, you know, I felt that way. But what does it mean? Because we're both saying the same thing. Black men and black women are saying the same thing that, that we both feel like we are not being heard by the other. We're not being protected and supported by the other. So instead of us trying to come together on this thing, we publicly go on social media and call each other out. And now I'm hearing that women have a struggle and black men don't because they're saying they're black men are being placed in the same category as white men and here's the thing about it the only time and y'all have heard me say this before the only time a black man is elevated to the same level as a white man is in the case of something negative or derogatory towards the males towards the male gender that is when black men and white men are like this any other time is white is black here white here there's a huge gap that there's no intention of closing that gap but when it's something derogatory like the hashtag me too all men black men you included sexual assault all men included toxic masculinity all men included you know they said that men ruin this world i've heard that on the view i've heard that on uh what's that show the talk real talk i've heard all these shows talk about how men have ruled uh ruined this world and y'all heard me say this before and they always say that men have taken this world and made it what it is that's why it's in so much trouble and women need to step up what men and y'all heard me ask this question before black men have never been in power in america it has always been white men but because we're talking about the negative aspects of america now we take black men who are down here white men who are up here and now it's like wait a minute hold on they're saying that men ruin this country black men guess what you're with us now we're a team we are a team we're a team now that is something negative you know we as black people have to learn that we have to learn to function together and we have to do it to where we're not using social media and public platforms to call each other out i see more posts about men on instagram facebook uh twitter i see more negative posts about black men than i see about black women i see nothing about white men i've seen i've never seen a negative post from a white woman about a white man i've never seen a negative post about a white man about white women and if you find one they are so far and few in between I mean, it is hard to find them, but go on YouTube and talk and look up black men. You will see hundreds of videos about black men ain't this, black men ain't that, black men ain't this, black men ain't that. Then the second in line will be videos about black women. And it's mainly black women talking about black women. And then you got some videos where you do have some black men talking about black women. And these videos are in a negative light. But you do have some that try to push a positive aspect. But there's so many negative videos about black men, black women, black couples, that it's hard to find the good videos that actually speak about the possibility and the reality that black love can exist and does. We're in a time, man, to where, you know, I, I, it's just hard because when I hear black men and women talk, we're both saying the same thing. We both have the same frustration. And if black women think that black men have some type of privilege that they don't, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And black men, if you think that black women have a privilege, 
that black that black men don't you're wrong the privilege that the black woman has is her goddess body and you know this is just my opinion but i really do believe that in some cases they will hire a black woman and elevate her to a point but they're gonna cut it off now it's only a certain level she can reach because when she tries to get higher they're gonna start flicking out like wait 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 know your place we brought you here for a reason because we want we, we brought we'd rather have you than a black man some places i really do believe do that because they want to insult the black man and they want to make the black woman feel empowered but they're keeping her monotone it's like okay this is where you at to put it like this when i was a director at a college oh fuck it when i was a director at Oglethorpe university okay i got the position the white lady named marilyn who was the vp over the department that i was uh the director of now keep in mind it was only two two black directors in this entire university and it was me and another lady i'm not gonna put her name because I, I don't i don't know if she want her name in there but she was actually on the board of trustees and she was the only black woman on the board of trustees and one white vp got her kicked off now the vp i work for in front of the hr person when i got the job we supposed to discuss you know what her expectations was and all this she told me i was status quo I was status quo. Not only did she tell me that I was status quo, she cut the budget for my department. She cut the budget to 35,000. Now this is a public safety department now. I was in charge of emergency coordinator for all the EPA, OSHA. I was in charge of all the fire alarm systems. I was in charge of the safety and security, student programs, uh, all of the officers, gear, supplies, all that. Three months later, she cut my budget again to $10,000. So let me tell you something. If y'all don't think that black men and black women both suffer the same thing, you're wrong. And that's what we got to come together at. As black men and women, we got to realize something. We're in the same struggle. We're in the same fight. And they're sitting there laughing at us because we're fighting each other. We're fighting each other. Black men and black women, we are fighting each other. Why? I don't understand it. We're so busy trying to hop on social media to talk about each other, degrade each other, and you don't hear any other culture or race doing this. But we do it to each other. We don't unify in any way other than self-destruction. Now, I know people are mad to talk about uh, let me tell you something. Susan Rice, Oprah Winfrey, and Gail King, okay? There is a price when you can take down a black person who has established stature, okay? So, that's why. And first is, the first reward you get for doing it is um, temporary acceptance. Once you get past the temporary acceptance stage, they elevate you to the point to where you can get financial gain. And all you have to do is discredit any black person who has created a legacy. And you notice that every black male that creates, that has a legacy, the goal is to rip it apart and destroy it. Black women too, look at Whitney Houston. They went so hard on Whitney Houston. We as black people have to take pride in our legacy. Keep our history. But we got to stop attacking each other. We have to stop attacking each other. And we're doing this all in public platforms. We're basically putting on a show for the whole world. For, every, for all of the Asians, the whites, the... Uh, I don't know, Canadians, Germans, uh, Indians, everybody. Black communities are putting on a show and they're all sitting back and laughing. 
They're laughing at Kanye West. They're laughing at the whole thing with Gayle King. And you know, it's just everything about us is copied, is mimicked. Look at our HBCU bands, okay? Let's take them. You find more schools trying to imitate our HBCU bands than any other bands. You, I find more people who never went to Auburn or Georgia or Texas A&M or Notre Dame, these schools that didn't allow black people, but we got more black Americans who will associate themselves and say, go Auburn, go Georgia to these schools who didn't even want you there in the first place. But yet, you can't make one post about Jackson State University, Grambling University, Prairie View A&M, Norfolk State University, Bethune-Cookman, okay, Alabama A&M, Alabama State, Tennessee State University, Bowie State University, okay, Bennett College. Why are we not lifting our voices for our HBCUs? Why are we so busy trying to distance ourselves and not take a part and be proud of being associated with who we are. If you can't accept the fact that, you know, you are tied and your connected and heritage is tied to HBCUs in the black community, then you're just as worse as Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and Susan Rice. You're just like them. Even Obama tried to distance himself from the black community. Nobody wants to admit that they're part of the black community. Now, to revert back to what Funky Deneva said, because Funky Deneva made a very good point. Now, let me say, I watch Funky Deneva videos that's about topics when he, when he talks about stuff that's like issues or things going on. I watch those videos. I don't really watch the movie, the uh, Housewives of Atlanta and all that stuff. I ain't into that. But... He made a very good point when he says that when well he asked a good question when African when when black people become successful you know do they have a responsibility to the rest of the black community now most of us would say yes most of us would say yes because think about it, one of the things that made our ancestors so great and so powerful, you know, was the fact that our ancestors understood if we're leaving tonight to escape the plantation, any slaves that want to come, come. Some slaves stayed back just to say, listen, y'all go. We're going to cause a distraction because if too many of us leave and they come walking through, we're gonna make it so everybody here. So they sacrificed so the other slaves could get away. But the other slaves also created a pipeline. Okay, once we get to freedom, you need to make sure you right behind us because we coming back for you. That mentality has been lost in modern day black society. You know, we don't come back for each other once we go up. We don't come back. It's like I made it. Now, I'm gonna help you out by creating a clothing line. And when you buy my clothing line, I got you. Or they come back through the neighborhood and just wave or do a few little things. You know, people often wonder, what is it that put us in the situation that we're in? And honestly, I think the other races know, and I think they, they, like I said, I think they laugh at it. They love the fact that black people fight each other because they know the worst thing that can happen for them is for black people, which I consider myself African-American. But anyway, I'm going to say blacks keep everybody happy. But the worst thing that can happen is people start to feel like if black people unify, we won't have control. And a lot of rich people who are African-American who have become successful, they really feel like they don't want to lose their wealth. They feel like if they, they become successful and they become too attached to the black community, it means jeopardizing their status. That's why when you hear some of them really start to speak out about the black community, 
they go back into a shell. It's like, think, okay, as soon as a little bit of a hint comes to this, uh, like, oh, you know what, your concerts may, be may not be happening, or we're going to shut down the venues, they go back into a shell. But the thing about it is, because I got to wrap this up, because uh, that hamburger is starting to get to my throat. But the thing about it is, as black people, we have to learn to function together. We have to learn the fact that the fight is not against black men against black women. The fight is not against black women against black men. The fight is us uniting with each other to thrive and stop just trying to survive. We have to get rid of this, you know, either all for me mentality or only females or only male mentality. We have to get rid of the us against us mentality that we have because real quick, you know, I mentioned earlier that it seems to me like other races have a code and the code is listen i don't agree with what you did now i'm not gonna go on a public platform and say it but i'm gonna dm you and let you know they have a way of doing it so that nobody knows their business but as black people we put everything out into the open we publicly go out of our way to ambush and destroy and degrade and, and question each other's integrity and character. We do it. Black men and women attack each other so hard because if one group attacks, another attacks. If there's one movement, then there's a counter movement. And half these fights we're fighting are not ours. We're fighting wars that's not even our war. We're fighting, listen, we're in a fight for something that's taking us away from what the real issues are we need to fight. We're so busy fighting their fight that we're forgetting about our own fight. That it's pitting us against each other. They're the only one making profit off of this. We're not. We're staying stagnant or either sinking because we're so busy fighting their fight that we're not paying attention to the fact that, wow, crap, I just shot my brother. I just shot my sister. You got so many shows out right now that's uplifting black women, which is good, but why can't we uplift each other? Why can't you have a black Angela Bassett with a black Chadwick Boseman? Why can't you have a black Denzel Washington, a black Lauren Fishburne with a black Viola Davis standing right there on stage and just say it. This is a black woman, I respect her. This is a black man, I respect him. We are not going to turn on each other. We are going to rise together as a people right now. That's what we need, but we're not getting that. See, we don't have the James Baldwin's, the Malcolm X's anymore. We don't have the people like that that know how to speak and articulate unity. You know what I'm saying? Shahzad Ali, we don't have women like her who know how to speak and motivate. We don't have that. They spoke unity. They spoke about the issue. They understood this is the issue. The issue is we need to stop fighting each other and come together. Listen, I know this video is long, but I am saying this from my heart. At some point, black men and women, we have to make a decision to stop going after each other. One side has got to decide that that's it, no more. I'm now down for my sister. I'm not down for my brothers. Now, I can't speak for the women. And I can't speak for the, all the black men. But I can ask this. If every black man right now make the decision that we are going to take the first step in building a bridge and coming together with our beautiful queens, the way to do that is we're not going to degrade them. We're going to stick up for them. We're going to look out for them. We are going to be supportive. If they tell you, if they verbally tell you, I don't need your help, then that's on them. But if they don't say it, we will make the effort to help them. But brothers, let us take the first step. 
Let us take the first step in bridging the gap. No more videos about how women, black women ain't this, black women ain't that. Let's create more positive messages. Let's, let's, let's fight our war, which means bringing us together and putting us in a position to where black people thrive and stop just surviving on scraps. My brothers, we can do this, but it's gonna take us to make the first move. We have to make the first move. Because we can sit back and say, well, I'm going to wait on the women to do it. I'm going to wait on the women to do it. Let, let, let us do it. Let us take the lead. I can't promise you that every woman, every black woman is going to be accepting. But for those of black women who are willing to accept the black man, then let us rise for them. Let us protect them. Let us be there for them. And black women understand that if we're making this vow that we're going to return to our black women as, as black men, responsible and accountable, then we need our black women to be receptive and also come responsible and accountable. This is not about who makes the most money. This is not about who gets the bigger paycheck, who got the better house. This is about us building a community where we are no longer attacking and fighting each other. We're no longer going after each other. We're both saying the same thing. We're fighting a fight that's not ours. It's time for us to fight together. All right? Please, if you agree with this man, hit up a comment down below. I'm just asking all my brothers, let us take the first step. And I know for some of you, you might be hurt. It may be your fault. It may not be your fault. But whatever you're going through, man, whatever you got against our black queens, let's put all that aside. Let's figure out a way to, to build this bridge and unite it. We have to. The existence of us depends on our beautiful black queens, just like their existence depends on us. We need each other. Please. So all my brothers, you know, I don't know what you want to do, man. Like I said, make a video, post a comment down below. You know what I'm saying? Make a video saying the same thing, man. I pledge a vow from this day forward to honor, respect, and protect my black queens. And be serious about it. Let's take the first step. Because we can't keep going at each other like this. We can't keep attacking each other like this. We cannot be the TV show, the comedy show of a race for everybody else. We're better than this. Look at what was accomplished by the Harlem Hellfighters. Look at what was accomplished by the Tuskegee Airmen. Look at what was, what's been accomplished by our black colleges who have survived despite the fact that they don't get the funding that other colleges do. We know how to survive, but we need to learn how to thrive together and support each other. All right. Please, I hope y'all take this to heart. I hope y'all take this to heart. Thank you for watching, man. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification and like button down below. I'll see you next time. Let him revitalize you. It's time to tune in. This here so fire. Empower your voice to inspire. Yeah, R-M-B-I-G.